It means God wants to pour abundance of grace upon us. Amen and amen. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. I like the way NLT puts it. So I'm not preaching tonight, amen. I'm not preaching. I'm just charging us, exhorting us, and uh, trying to help us set our heart ready for what's about to come. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. Acts chapter 6 verse 8, the New Living Translation of the Bible. It says, Stephen, a man full of what? God's grace and power performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. So, what was the secret behind the amazing miracles and signs amongst the people? What was it? The grace of God and the power of God. Amen and amen. We do not do miracles by our own ability. We do not do miracles by our own strength. We do it by grace. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If I will choose for a title tonight of this brief exhortation, and I promise it's going to be brief. Amen. I will say building capacity for signs and wonders. Building capacity for signs and wonders. Mark chapter 16 verse 20. Can we go back there again tonight? It says, And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. I want us to read it together. So you should open your Bible to the place. Amen. Open your Bible. I'm just exhorting. I'm just exhorting. And also trying to put across a few instructions that can guide us. If you are there, say yes, I'm there. It says, I want to go. And I went out and preached everywhere. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, it looks like you like to read it the second time. You are always, always doing this to me. You know that the first one is Riazal, right? Can we do it again now? Are you ready now? Clear your throat. Yeah, uh, please take it easy on clearing the throat. One, two, go. Everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the world through their company. Signs. Amen. This is the will of God for us this year. This is what God wants us to do. God wants us to go everywhere. God wants us to go everywhere. Not go everywhere in search of food to eat. Not go everywhere in search of clothes to wear. Not go everywhere in search of a house to live in. Not go everywhere in order for us to fulfill our mundane things. He says he wants us to go everywhere and preach. Glory be to God. He wants us to preach everywhere. And he has guaranteed us that this year, he is going to walk with us. Somebody say, God is going to walk with me. So you are not going to be doing it alone. You are not going to do, be doing it by yourself. You are going to be doing it with God. Hallelujah. And then, he says, when you are going out like that, I'm going to confirm my word. I'm going to confirm my word because you are going to see signs and you are going to see wonders. Glory to God. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18, the Bible says, Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Zion. Somebody shout, I am for signs. I am for wonders. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In John chapter 14 verse 12, Jesus said that the works that I do, you will do also. He said, greater works than this, you will also do. Amen and amen. Because I go to the Father. For all, so which means that for Jesus, 
the barest minimum should be what he did. Because what he's expecting is for us to do greater works. Glory be to God. So if I want to see the mirror image of what Jesus expects of me, I should just see what Jesus did. And that is his barest minimum. And he will not say that we are going to do it if he has not invested the capacity in us for us to do it. Amen and amen. If the potential to do it is not in you, Jesus will not call it out of you. Amen. If somebody says that he made me slap him. No. The capacity to slap him was already inside of me. Opportunity just created itself. And I manifested that capacity. Amen and amen. So the capacity to do greater works is already inside of you. But you see, if we do not build that capacity, greater work will remain in the pages of the scriptures and we will not see it manifest in our lives. And yet, the totality of the will of God for you and I is for us to be able to do greater works. Somebody shout greater works. Greater works. We can see it in the life of the disciples. In Acts chapter 3, as soon as the, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and then in Acts chapter 3, the Bible spoke to us about Peter and John. They were going at the hour of prayer to the temple, and then they got to the gate of the temple called Beautiful, and they saw a man. The man has been lame for 40 years. Amen and amen. For, the man was there when Jesus was alive, but Jesus did not do anything about it. Amen. Because the things that are left for Jesus to do, he has left you and I to do them. So Peter and John saw the man and said, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, we give to you. Somebody say, I have something. I have something. I have something. So they had developed their capacity to the point where they believe that whatever Jesus told them, they can do it. So that's why they faced a lame man and they were able to do a miracle in the life of the lame man. And then, of course, the story of Stephen that I read earlier on, he was full of great, God's grace and power and he performed amazing miracles. You, all these guys are ordinary human beings like you and I. They are men of like passion. They are men who shall go to the bathroom. They are men who, go, who uses the toilet just like you and I. They are men that eat food like you and I. And yet, because of their faith in what Jesus told them, because of the fact that they are able to believe that they, they can do what Jesus said they can do, they are able to manifest greater, greater works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible speak, spoke of Saul. So now Paul in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 12. It's very interesting. I like that verse of the Bible. It says, now God worked on usual miracles. I declare over you this year, God is going to work on usual miracles through you. It says, God works on usual miracles by the hand of Paul. By your hands, God will do unusual miracles. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them. And the evil spirits went out of them. That's my favorite part. Paul did not have to show up. What had touched Paul only had to touch those, those people that needed deliverance. All these ones that we all we go and uh, refresh deliverance every day. It is not necessary. Glory be to God. When you walk in the capacity or in the reality of what Jesus has invested in you and I, your cloth is in enough to minister deliverance to the sick. Glory be to God. So God wrought might, unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Glory to God. And so what do we do to build our capacity? 
I realized that, you know, Pastor Chris was talking about the fact that capacity is a container, is, is how much we can take, not how much God can give. Amen? That's what I realized. Capacity is not how much God can give, is how much you and I can what? Can take. So may, may, many times we are desiring from God something very massive, and yet our capacity cannot accommodate what we are desiring. Amen and amen. So this year, we have to do it differently. We have to build spiritual capacity so that we can be for signs and wonders that we have been ordained for. And so I realized in my experience that in building capacity, that one of the critical ways by which we build capacity is by stretching. Somebody says stretch. 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 Now, I can guarantee you that nobody builds capacity in their comfort zones. When God is going to help you build your capacity, he will have to take you out of your comfort zone. Many of us are too comfortable for the capacity we want to experience. Capacity is built in the stretch. Capacity is built in the stretch. And you see, what I realize is that everybody's capacity can grow. So when I stretch to this point today, after some time, I can become comfortable with that point. When you see that you have become comfortable with a certain routine, then it is time to stretch further. Glory be to God. Miracles respond to capacity. Your capacity to believe for it. Trust me, God will not go and look for extra power to heal the blind person than he needed to heal somebody who had cold or kata. He's not going to get extra power. The same power, the same virtue that left Jesus and healed the woman with the hue of blood is the same virtue that raised the girl from the dead. In Luke chapter 5. Sorry, Mark chapter 5. Glory be to God. So it's about our capacity to believe for him. For, for, for the miracle. To believe that he can do it through us. Now, the emphasis here is not, the, uh, it's not about we looking for the miracles. Glory be to God. It's about being the ones that are performing the miracles. This year... We are not designed for, to look everywhere for miracle. Jesus said that the wicked and adulterous generation seek for signs and wonders. Which means that if you want to put yourself amongst the congregation of the wicked, you'll be seeking for signs and wonders. Because you ought to be the sign and the wonder. Remember my illustration. Stop queuing for bread when you own a bakery. Glory be to God. Stop staying on the queue for bread when you own a bakery. God wants to do mighty things through you and I. God wants to show the world how great he is through you and I. But we have to build capacity for us to experience the things that he wants to do for us. And this capacity is built in the stretch, not in the comfort zone. Tell your neighbor it's time to stretch. It's time to stretch. 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 First recommendation of the area of stretch is your prayer stretch. Prayer. Prayer stretch. Prayer stretch. We have to take our prayer life to another level. Amen. Prayer stretch. These ones that we are tired after speaking in tongues for 10 minutes. You need to stretch it. Amen. When you get to 30 minutes, even though you have been looking at your watch, it looks like the watch is slow. Stretch it further. Maybe by our virtual, but the reason why you came is to help some people to stretch. She organizes a prayer meeting. They do seven hours non-stop. Amen. Somebody's like, eh, seven hours. I don't want to come for that prayer meeting. They are, eh, eh. But that is where capacity for the miraculous is built. It's in the stretch. 
It can never be in the comfort zone. You can't be doing 15 minutes prayer and no fasting and no nothing and expect the manifestation of the signs and wonders. Now, this is, this is the way it works. I think I've shared it in the midweek service before. Jesus did not say you will pray for the sick and they will recover. Jesus said you will lay hands on the sick and they will hear what? Recover. What Peter and John did for the lame man was to say in the name of Jesus rise up and begin to walk. They didn't sit there and now begins that they began to say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask. No, it wasn't. That was not the that was not the protocol. The prayers they needed they, to pray, they had prayed it before got, getting into the environment. They didn't even they didn't even plan on meeting the guy. But you see, when our life, when our prayer life is rich, and you will need to keep stretching it. One of the things that happens is that we are not going to be afraid when we are faced with a situation. That's when the miraculous is, we are, that's when we are able to demonstrate the miraculous through our lives. So the first place of stretch is a place of what? Prayer. Move your 10 minutes to 30 minutes. Move your 30 minutes to one hour. Move your one hour to two hours. Move your two hours to five hours. Glory be to God. Stretch in the place of prayer. That's where we build our capacity for the miraculous. That's where we build our capacity for signs and wonders. Another place of stretch I will recommend tonight is stretch in the place of the word. Stretch in the... Let your appetite for the word become bigger. Glory to God. Let your appetite for the word become what? Bigger. Spend longer time in the place of the word. This devotional thing that you do, that you read the devotional and then you read one verse of the Bible, it's not enough. You need to be able to tarry with the word. Glory be to God. Stay in the place where you are not in a hurry to walk away from the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This year, you shouldn't be one of those people who are complaining that, ah, pastor, 30 minutes, ah, is enough. Let your capacity be enlarged for the word. And it comes by practice. Somebody say practice. Practice. When I started out in those days of tapes, there are, there are one hour tapes and there are, 40, uh, there are 45 minutes tapes and there are one hour 30 minutes tape. I usually go for the one hour 30 minutes tape. I just feel the longer they are, the better for me. We sit down and we listen. This year, do word retreat. All you are doing is just listening to message. Just spending your time listening to message. That's where your capacity is enlarged. Glory be to God. Another area where you need to stretch, another area where you and I need to stretch is in the area of staying. In the area of staying. Staying in worship. Staying in the presence. I'm not talking about coming to church. That's not where it is. It's not, it's, that's not the only place. I'm talking about in your personal place. In your, in your, just, just, you know, prayer is not just all about what we can dump on God. After you have dumped all you, have to, you need to dump, can you sit down and just stay? Amen. And let him speak to you. Start with five minutes. You will know how uneasy it is to stay five minutes if you have not been staying before. You know the way some, some of us, we do our prayer life. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you are a good God. Oh, Father, I worship you because you are a faithful God. And then you move from there. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I go out today, I ask that you favor me. I ask that you prosper the works of my hand. I ask that you bless me. You bless my wife. You bless my children and nobody else. Father, I ask that you do this for me. Thank you, Heavenly Father. This is the confidence that we have in you. That whenever we ask anything according to your will, you answer us. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you have answered us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then, that's all. And then you start doing every other thing. Ah. That relationship with God is not romantic. I imagine that's what I do with my wife. Babe, 
I just pour everything. And then I say, it's over. When she wants to talk, I say, ah, no, 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 no. I'm busy. I need to do some things quickly. Yeah. You think we'll be here for 15 years? No, it doesn't happen like that. That's the way we treat our relationship with God most of the time. It's supposed to be a call and response thing. It's supposed to be a dialogue. So after you have prayed, after you have waited on there, after you have, uh, you, you, you have worshipped, after you have spoken into the realm of the Spirit, just stay. Amen? Stay. Just stay in the place of prayer. Stay. Just stay and sit down. And just let him speak to you. Say, I, I want to hear from you. And God knows when you are honest. And you see, what I realize is that you don't hear from me from him in a hurry. Amen and amen. You don't hear from him in a what? In a hurry. I've shown, on, shown us Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But let me show us again. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And then Isaiah chapter 41, verse 1. We have to develop our capacity to stay quiet. Amen. So, but those who wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be what? Weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then in verse 1 of Isaiah 41, it says, keep what? Silence before me. That's how to wait. Amen and amen. Keep what? Silence before me, O Kostan, and let the people renew their strength. You get it? So those who wait upon the Lord are what? Renew their strength. And he's just teaching us how to get our strength renewed. He says what? You keep what? Silent. You keep what? Silent. It's part of the capacity you and I need to build this year. Glory to God. Just what? Stay quiet. And then the last one I will say to share, share with us is to take faith action. Take actions that will stretch you in terms of, see, when somebody tells you that they have a headache, pray for them. Hallelujah. In fact, pray for the kind of sickness that will disgrace you in court. Amen. Well, if the person does not receive their miracle. But the truth is this. We need to forget. We need to take ourselves out of the equation. Forget about ourselves. And focus on the one who does the miracle. This year, in your stretch, take faith actions. Take faith what? Actions. That's how we build capacity. For the miraculous. As I close in John chapter 3. I said I was not going to stay long. I didn't know that I was going to spend. He won't. In John chapter 3. Nicodemus had an encounter with Jesus. And he walked up to Jesus and said. Jesus. Say, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Say no one can do all these things that you do. Except God is with him. Jesus said, I agree. But you see, the response of Jesus is a very interesting response. Because what Nicodemus was trying to find out was the secret to Jesus' miraculous ministry. Amen. He wanted to know, you know, Nicodemus was a teacher of, teacher of the Lord, was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was, he was, I mean, but this guy came and he took the word by the storm. He was just doing miracles. And he said, no man can do all of these things that you are doing. It is evidence that God is with you. And then Jesus, res uh, Jesus responded, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What Jesus was saying to Nicodemus is that stop focusing on my doing. Focus on being. Amen and amen. Focus on being. The secret to manifesting the miracles that I manifested, that I manifest, is becoming who I am. Amen and amen. That's why I said, except a man be born again. That is, if you want to see the miraculous, you have to change. It's about the nature. It's about who I am. 
the son, the 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 child of a dog will bark. Is that not so? You don't need to. It will bark. The child of a, a lion will roar because the roar is inborn. You get what I'm saying? So when your nature changes, you definitely manifest the nature of the person that you carry. Are you get what I'm saying? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. But we need to build our capacity in these areas so that we can find, so that the investment of heaven in us can find expression in our world today. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We need to, we need to come to a place this year where the testimonies we are hearing are the testimonies of exploits. It's not that, oh, I was sick and now I am healed. It's a testimony that there was somebody in my office who was sick and I laid hands on the person and the person was healed to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Those are the testimonies that God wants us to share. Amen? This year. Because it's our what? Harvest time. What time is it? Harvest time. What time is it? Harvest time. All right, lift your hands to him.